Where I'm going, there isn't going to be any trouble, answers Burr Rabbit. Do you think he's going to find a place like this? No. no. Miriam, do you think he's ever going to find a place that's completely free of trouble? Oh, I don't think so, because I think I agree with Bert, Uncle Remus, because I think there isn't any place in the world that there really isn't any trouble. Miriam doesn't think there's any place you can go that's going to be completely free of trouble. Let's see what happens to Burr Rabbit next. So Burr Rabbit leaves all these trouble, troubles behind. Looks pretty carefree, doesn't he? Yeah. Do you think he's headed for trouble? I think he is, because wherever you go, you sh you're always going to get in a little bit of trouble. Remember what Uncle Remus said to him. Keep this in mind. Stevie? Yes, sir. Burr Rabbit is mighty happy, with no troubles to worry him. Do you notice anything, Joanne, that's written a little bit different in this film strip frame than your reading book? Mighty. Mighty. We don't usually say mighty, do we? Very. Why do you suppose that Mr. Harris, who wrote this story, would have put mighty in there they, instead of very? They, because this is supposed to be Uncle Remus is a southern, is from the south, and he has to have a southern accent when he tells the story, and they wanted to have to make it sound at, at least um, so you could tell that the story was from, some, told, being told by someone from the south. What about the word right before rabbit, Peter, Philip? Burr. What's burr? To me, it means brother. Why did they use brother fox? What might we have said if, we, if you were writing the story? I would have, if I would have wrote, wrote in burr. You would have written burr? Because it's you shorter. Think? Could you have said Mr. Fox or Mrs. Fox? Like, here it means like brother. Brother rabbit. They didn't say Mr. Rabbit and Mrs. Rabbit. They said brother rabbit and sister, sister rabbit. rabbit. Good. No more troubles. Doesn't he look happy? Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice to be as happy as Burr Rabbit? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No school. <laughs> <laughs> but suddenly, what happens? But suddenly, Burr Rabbit steps into a snare trap. Zip, and up he goes. Now this time, do you suppose you could change your way of reading just for a few minutes and read this the way you would read it if you were Uncle Remus telling the story? Larry? But suddenly, Burr Rabbit steps into a snare trap. Zip, and up he goes. That was very good. Now the reason I told you to try reading this with a southern accent is because when we do our puppet show, you might want to use the southern dialect Joel Chandler Harris used in his original story. Oh, I think I know who set this old snare trap. I think it was old Bear Fox. But how am I going to get down from here? Oh. In the morning time, Bear Fox is up when he's down with the fire cooking. I got him, I got him. That pesky old red not smart me more than one time, and this time he ain't going to get away. In the meantime, Bear Bear just happened to be coming along the path. Duh! How the bear rabbit? What you doing up there? Oh, hi, bear bear. I'm scaring away those black birds called crows, and I'm earning the dollar a minute. Say, bear bear, how would you like to have my job? Okay. I wouldn't think of taking your job, bear rabbit. Oh, come on. You'll be rich by this afternoon, and I got enough money already. Okay, if you insist. Oh, I do. I do. You don't know how much I do. 